Hi team, today we are going to review ratio tables based on last week's concept check. That seemed to be the one area that confused some people. So I wanted to go back over it, make sure we understand it um, to prepare us for our assessment on Thursday on ratios. Let's get started. So our first guided practice pro problem says Logan reads five pages in 20 minutes. He spends the same amount of time per page. So we're gonna complete this table over here. So the first thing we should do in a ratio table is put in the ratio that's in the problem. So the ratio in the problem is that Rogan, Logan, I cannot talk today, can read five pages in 20 minutes. So I go to five pages and I type in the 20 minutes. So then from there, we are going to problem solve what would it be for him to read one page, two page, eight pages and 11. So the first thing I would do is go down to one page because I know that five divided by five is one. So I do the same thing to this side. 20 divided by five is four. So it takes him four minutes to read just one page. So then if it takes four, four minutes to read one page, we can say, well, it takes eight minutes to read two pages because one times two is two and four times two is eight. If we're trying to get to eight, we could take the two and do two times four to get eight. So eight times four would give me 32. Last, I would go back to the one and one times 11 is 11. So I would do four times 11, which would be 44. So you're using your ratio understanding to complete the entire thing. Please remember with ratios, we are multiplying. Even though it kind of looks like we're adding at the top where it's one plus four, or you can go, when I add one page, I add four minutes. And you are thinking ratio, even though it seems like you're adding. Some students in my class noticed that they saw a pattern across. One times four is four, two times four is eight, five times four is 20. That is always there, it's just sometimes it's easier to see in certain problems than in other problems. This one would be an example of where this inner relationship is easy to see. Okay, let's look at another problem. Okay, Aubrey bought four tacos and paid $6. Using the same ratio, complete the table. So the original ratio is four tacos for $6. So that would be the first thing that I put in my ratio table. The next thing I would do is find the ones that I already know that I can easily get to. Well, if I know four, then I can get to two because two is half of four, so that's dividing by two. So what I do to one, I have to do to the other, so six divided by two would be three. So for two tacos, it's three dollars. So then if we think about to get one, that's also divided, two divided by two, so then think three divided by two. So think of money, if you have $3 and you're having to share it with your brother, sister, mom or dad, you would each get $1.50. Okay, so then we could think, well, how could I get to three? Well, one times three is three, so then $1.50 times three. So think $1.50 plus $1.50 gives you the three, which we see under the two, then just add another $1.50, that would be $4.50. Okay, so now to get to 10, we could use the two to get to 10. Two times five is 10, so three times five is 15. And then to get to 15, you would do two, I would do three times five is 15. So you might have to think about four times five, or you could say, okay, well, 10 is 15. Well, 14 would be the 15 plus the 16. Okay, hold on, let me zoom this out real quick. So we're trying to get to that 15, which is a little tricky. So we could say for three is $4.50 equals the 15, so this is times five, so I would need to do this times five. So if you break that apart, four times five is 20, and then the 50 cents times five, 
Think of 50 cents plus 50 cents is a dollar, plus another 50 cents is $1.50, another 50 cents is $2, and one more 50 cents is $2.50. So that would be a total of $22.50 for 15. Okay, hopefully that helped and you have a better understanding. The biggest thing to remember with ratios is however you change one number, you have to change the other, and we are multiplying and dividing. And a ratio table is just another way to write equivalent ratios. If you think of it as they're all just, they look all just like fractions. Okay, so you have the two guided practice problems to fill in and then four actual practice on your own problems. If you need any help, please reach out to me and I will be on Google Meet at one o'clock to help out. Have a great day, guys.